He's got his 250th this week, so can we all give him a clap? This, this is your last special with Heath Shaw. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, Heath. Thanks for having me. Heath Shaw, born on the 27th of November, 1985, to loving mother, Lisa, and father, Raymond. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, Reese and sister, Lane. From an early age, your parents knew that they had a not-so-normal individual on their hand. With strawberry blonde hair, and a smart-ass rebellious attitude, they know that they had their hands full. Do you recognise this next voice? You've come a long way since those early days at, down at Diamond Creek with your, your red hair and your freckles and your white skin. Um, yeah, that's me older brother, Reese. Yeah, Reese, uh, he couldn't be here today, but he sends this message. I remember the day that we were up on the fort um, and Lane was playing in the sand below us and you had that 12-inch bolt and uh, you had no hesitation in dropping that on her head. From an early age, it's fair to say you knew how to find yourself in hot water. It's something that you would perfect over time. The next question I'm going to ask you is, do you recognise this next voice? Uh, for the first two years, you uh, probably didn't really speak to me that much. Yeah, the great Dane Beams. Dane Beams, he obviously one. couldn't be here today and he sends you this message. And, you know, there was obviously the New York dupes. Um, I feel like I really got to know Johnny Patton when I was in New York, even though he wasn't even there. Um, just by some of the stories that we told over dinner. Uh, John, you're a creep. I'm sure you've passed a lot of players along the way. Um, probably particularly the mids and not getting back into the space. I'm sure you've caught plenty of sprays mids. Um, and the coaches, I'm sure you've given them all a hard time. Leon, you've probably put up with a lot. Um, actually, Spike McVeigh, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because he seems to really like you and that's really rare for Heath. A promising young junior footballer, you're always destined to play AFL football. But there was one running theme to your football career, which is apparent in this next photo. Sponsors were very quick to jump off you, Heath. <laughs> Not much is known about your schooling years, but you were, you were quite the handful, as you say, unteachable at times. I just want to run through a couple of photos here that we have. Roll the next one. Um, I just want to look at this badge. Can you zoom in on this badge, Adler? Shooting council here. I thought you said you were uh, never in any leash shoot groups at school or anything like that. No, I stole the badge off someone else. <laughs> um, you, you give me a bit of stick for the, for the blonde in the hair. Yeah. What about your formal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's no rough. That's just, yeah. that's just wrong. One person who did realise your potential butt was your ex-coach Mick Malthouse and ex-premiership captain Nick Maxwell. They also have messages for you today. Unfortunately, both can't be here with us today. Mick sends his apologies and Nick is setting up in the third layer of the GWS kick-out zone. <laughs> I didn't think there was any real doubt that you'd get there, mate. Uh, I remember playing you in Ellis Springs on the wing in a practice match and I fell in love with the way you played. You probably had the second or third best smother in the century. I can't remember the other two, so I'm going to leave you with you to go back and research that. But it was an amazing smother. Crept up on him. He did have a bad moment. He was deaf and probably blind at the time, but you've got him. Well done. Well, Heath, 250 games. Uh, I guess I always thought you'd play a lot of games if your off-field didn't affect it. And I'm a real sucker for punishment uh, in retirement, still coming up and spending more and more time with you. Keeping on the theme of these celebratory messages, we also have a couple of other friends that want to say well done. G'day, Heath. It's your old mate Daisy here, brother. Uh, just want to wish you all the very best for your big milestone coming up. 200 games is an amazing effort. <laughs> 250 games is an amazing effort, mate. Look forward to seeing that little waddle of yours out there and those little bandy legs kicking it to yourself and then kicking it to the opposition 50 times. Good on you, brother. Um, I will never forget when I first met you that time, mate, but uh, who knew that we'd live together for a few years until um, Taryn completely swept you off your feet and I didn't see you. Uh, I haven't really seen you since, mate, so come say hi to me soon. Wow, Peter, <laughs> the big 250. Who would have thought that? Who would have thought you would have got to 250 games of AFL footy? Um, it's an amazing achievement, mate, considering um, your time at Collingwood could have ended at, uh, at any stage, easily three or four times. I got in trouble for that, believe it or not. <laughs> a bad passenger. Mate, I know we, uh, we come across a guy in New York uh, that we still keep in touch with now and he wishes you all the best. I've actually uh, got a little surprise for you, so um, here is Noby Nobs. He, you got a big game coming up, man. 250th game. We're so proud of you, my man. You're the man. <laughs> I've met him twice. <laughs> um, you must have had so many incredible experiences over the journey. Do you want to take a minute just to thank a few people? 
Um, yeah, there's, oh, there's heaps of people that you come across over your time um, at football clubs. That's the best thing about football clubs is there's always a connection, always people around. Um, my old teammates at Collingwood, I'll start with them. Um, they were good, but they were getting a bit stale, so I moved up to the Giants. Um, and obviously a young, fresh group took me back to my younger, younger 20s and um, I've enjoyed every minute here. Thanks to everyone who's been a part of it. Um, I don't know who this is going to, I don't even know if I should thank my family or not, but I'll probably I'll throw them in there. Um, family, friends and, and obviously Cogs and whoever else helped with this little um, set up today. Thank you very much. I'm glad I'm entertaining and the butt of a few jokes because it's always good. Perfect. You've been through some ups and downs, the highs and the nightclubs, mate, but you're a unique, unique player, even more unique person. I know everyone here at um, the Giants and on behalf of the playing group, congratulations on reaching 250. Before we do let you go, but we've got um, one more person who has sent a little message um, to you. I remember back in 2014 when the GOS hierarchy patients were being tested by your larrican ways. Got an idea? Got no. an idea? No. From one left hand <laughs> pass to another, who would have thought the man you did name the junkyard dog back in 2010 would be wearing your beloved number 23 for the Giants? Congratulations on a fantastic personal achievement of 250 games, mate. I remember back in 2014 when the GWS hierarchy's patience was being tested by your larrikin ways. But thankfully, you've turned things around since with your hard work, skill, and passion to be a great leader and mentor to the youngsters at the Giants. I'm sure you and the youngsters there don't need reminding. You've had two All-Australians since, and hopefully premierships to come after you won Collingwood days. Enjoy the occasion on Saturday night, mate, with your teammates and your family and friends. You've deserved it. Can we all put our hands together and uh, this is your life, Heath Shaw. That's great. Thank you.